welcome to the modern networking lecture series which is concerned with SDN and NFE that is software defined networking and uh, network function virtualization so this is the first lecture in the first few lecture we will just study the networking infrastructure the reasons for turning towards the modern networking that is the SDN and NFE we already have the networking infrastructure but uh, that particular infrastructure is not enough so we need to turn to an, uh, this modern networking so in the first few lectures we will uh, see the standards the networking infrastructure and then we will go to the topics that is SDN and NFE the basic infrastructure and then to the security part so we start with this the as you can see the diagram the elements of modern networking so this is the networking ecosystem okay can see the various layers okay. at the topmost we have various applications so here we have the application service provider then content provider then application service provider then application provider then uh, we have the in the second layer as we can see we have the network provider okay the internet and uh, at the last and uh, we have the end users okay so uh, let us see them in detail so we start with the very first uh, the, from the bottom that is the end users so uh, this modern networking system consists of few elements the first one is the uh, end user now the end user it may consist of users running some services in an enterprise environment or a public setting or at a home so the end user may be using the may, may require some services or some is running the application so that end user may be sitting in a public network or a home network or maybe an enterprise, uh, enterprise environment now the entire ecosystem exists to provide service to the end user so that is what we want we want the services or the applications for the end users this entire ecosystem is to provide the service to the end users and the whatever platform the end user may be using it may be a fixed one like we have a pc or a workstation it can be portable like uh, it can be a laptop or maybe it can be a mobile one mobile that is a laptop uh, maybe uh, sorry not like this can be a tablet it can be a smartphone etc then uh, the network access facility as you can see in the diagram after end user we have this uh, network uh, access facility okay so using this uh, network access facility the user connects to the network based services and the content through a wide variety of uh, uh, network access facilities we have dsl lines okay or maybe the cable modems through which uh, or we wi-fi or wimax uh, or, or cell cellular modems so these are the uh, we can say the way by which the user gets an access to the network facilities okay so these are the access facilities to which the user gets then access to the internet okay now such network access facilities enable the user to the to use connect directly to the internet okay uh, which are provided by various network providers okay so we have wi-fi network cellular networks which can be private or shared network facilities etc okay then uh, after this uh, what we have is the see the users we come to the last one actually the user wants to access the whatever the the user uses this network facilities to access the applications and the content and they are of the three categories they can be uh, we can say the the things which are the to the interest of the users it can be the application providers there are then we have application service providers then we have content providers now application providers what we see is uh, they provide applications or maybe like apps that run on users platform okay uh, now that user platform it can be a mobile itself okay we see we can run many applications on our mobile phone then some of the apps have become available for fixed as well as portable platforms also okay. then uh, we have this uh, application service providers now the application service provider they act as a server or the host because the application has to be hosted on some machine so it, it may be like a server or a host where the application is hosted okay and that is uh, given by the providers platforms okay so traditional example of such software is web servers we have email servers then database servers okay so they are the application service providers okay the most prominent which of course we'll study in this particular topic is also the cloud computing provider then next we have the 
content provider so a content provider serves the data to the to be consumed on the user device so they are the data providers actually we can say like we have the email music video uh, which may be actually some uh, commercial it may be commercial intellectual property okay it is a commercial property then in some instances an enterprise may be an application or the content provider okay so the, the examples of content providers are like music re uh, record labels or movie studio etc now uh, that's all the that's what was we, we saw the elements now the two major elements of modern networking okay so these are the two major elements of the modern networking so the first one is data center networking okay so both large enterprise data centers and the cloud providers they consist of very large number of interconnected servers okay so a tremendous amount of of course data is passed okay through the cloud and through the data centers so they 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 have a very large number of interconnected servers and of course uh, typically as much as 80% of the data traffic is within the data center network okay so out of 100% we can say 80% of the traffic is just uh, moved between the data center itself and the 20% is going to the outside uh, network external networks to reach the users okay so so you can imagine the 80 percent of traffic is just shared between the data center servers okay whether we if we when we talk about the cloud providers then uh, to this two actually this is not only this is uh, actually we can say this two like we have a data centers as well as uh, we have the cloud service providers then uh, next is a uh, iot or fog networking so uh, this iot it is deployed by an enterprise and may consist of hundreds thousands even millions of devices okay so internet of things it consists of large number of devices you can say millions they can, they can run to hundreds and thousands and millions of devices which are connected through internet so they can be sensors they can be variety of devices which are connected to internet so vast bulk of data traffic to and from these devices is either machine to machine or rather maybe it can be even user to machine okay so these are the main drivers okay for the modern networking now this is a, an example of network architecture a global network architecture as we can see okay so here we have the enterprise network okay this is the you can see this is the enterprise network okay and this is another part of the maybe it can be the same enterprise network but it, it is branched so it is uh, geographically uh, i so maybe uh, place at some different location okay and this are connected by uh, van okay then we have this uh, we have ip backbone okay then here we can see there are small and medium business size business using this uh, network facility and then here we have the residentials who are using the wi-fi network then here we have the public cellular network okay so you can see the symbols are also they, they are defined the core routers then the edge routers simple routers the routers with firewall for protection so this is the how we represent the global network architecture now the ip backbone we'll study one by one the elements the ip backbone which is also called as the core so this represents a portion of internet or the enterprise uh, ip network okay so the backbone consists of high performance routers which are called as core routers okay and they are interconnected with high volume optical links so optical fiber links are used because they have a tremendous capacity okay and of course this optical fiber they use the wavelength division multiplexing they have a tremendous capacity so by multiplexing we can uh, utilize we can make an efficient use of the bandwidth so this wavelength division and multiplexing is used so uh, this link has multiple logical channels occupying different portion of the optical bandwidth okay then uh, next we have the aggregation routers which are also called as the edge routers okay now the name edge is also properly suitable to for this routers because they are located at the periphery at the boundaries of the ip backbone and they provide connectivity to external networks and the users okay so they they are placed at the boundaries okay so aggregation routers they are used within an enterprise network to connect a number of routers and switches and also they are they are the, to external resources uh, such as the ip backbone or the high speed lan so we can see this uh, particular backbone routers they are or they are, they are also of course called as the edge routers okay so this they are the communicating means 
for this IP backbone with the other networks you can see this this one is connecting with this one okay then uh, many cases we can see this is connected connecting to other networks then uh, uh, next is a large enterprise network as we can see in that particular diagram at the bottom most left part uh, this one this one okay so oh sorry this one we also have, sorry this one is the upper one enterprise network okay so large enterprise network so that was the top left so the upper left portion portion we can see depicts the portion of a large enterprise network okay and of course it is showing two sections of the network which are connected to private high speed so we can see on the right side top right side we can see uh, the same uh, network is there it is branched okay there is a branch so th th this uh, they, are, they may be belonging to the same organization okay. so uh, they are connected through a high speed van okay and uh, which which is interconnected with optical links now enterprise assets are connected to and they are also protected from the ip backbone or the internet with wire with with uh, routers which have firewall capability okay then now after this we see the small and medium sized businesses so the lower left of that perfect diagram it depicts what might be a layout for the small or medium sized businesses and uh, these businesses they are connected uh, they rely on actually ethernet lan okay. so connection to internet through the router could be through a cable or a dsl connection or a maybe a dedicated high speed link now next we come back again to the users so we just define the users so users they can be we have uh, maybe the they can be residential users or mobile devices so residential users the the lower portion as we see uh, they shows a uh, individual residential users they are connected to the internet service provider okay so these are the service provider which connect which provide the internet service uh, through some subscriber connection the common examples are of course as we know this is dsl or maybe a high speed link over telephone lines okay or maybe cable tv facility okay so in case in each of this case these are separate issues concerning the signal of course when we use different types of uh, service they need different types of signal encoding error control etc then with the mobile devices okay uh, like for example we have the smartphones and tablets they can be connected to the internet through the public cellular networks which can be high speed connection or typical optical connection to the internet okay now this is the particular network hierarchy as we can see the this diagram shows the hierarchy of an enterprise network uh, which we saw previously so this is the thing you can we have it can be divided into three parts one is the core network the distribution network and the access network okay so these are the three uh, layers we can say or the three uh, parts okay so the enterprise uh, often this the enterprises they often design the network facility in the three tier hierarchy the first is the access networks then the distributed networks and the core networks now regarding the access network uh, this access network they are the closest to the end users okay so uh, an access network is a van, is a lan or maybe a campus wide network which consists of lan switches okay uh, and we also have IP routers that provide uh, for larger lens we have IP routers which provide connectivity amongst the switches so the access router it supports the end user equipment because the end user uh, that, that can be uh, maybe a fixed one that is a desktop or maybe a laptop computer or mobile device so this uh, access network it must support this end devices then the access network also supports local servers which primarily or exclusively serve the users on the local access network okay then one or more access routers connect the local assets to the higher level of the hierarchy now above this uh, access router we have the distributed uh, network so one one of the we can say through, through one of the way we have this uh, connected to the uh, distribution network now this connection may be through a internet or some other public or private communication facility so access routers they function as the edge routers okay when we, we connect from one level to the another level then next we have the distributed distribution network now distribution network it connects access networks which with, with each other and with the core network okay as we can see they are lying at the center 
so they can also be used to connect the access networks amongst themselves and they also connect the, 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 the them with the core network so an edge router in the distribution network connects to an edge router in the access network to provide the connectivity so of course we have a, a an edge router which will be in the, the access network and, and another in the we can say in the next distribution network maybe one or more so they will be connected so the two routers are configured to recognize each other and generally exchange routing and connectivity information through some traffic related info so we have various protocols through which they share the routing information okay one edge router maybe from the uh, access network it is uh, sharing the information with the distribution network and distribution to the edge router okay so uh, this cooperation is called as the peering part this is a peering is called peering now distribution network also serves to aggregate traffic destined for the core router now whatever traffic is coming from the uh, this access network it goes it has ultimately go it ultimately goes to the core network so this distribution network it also aggregates you can say okay so distributes or uh, just uh, clears the traffic to for the router so that there is a uh, it, it will protect the core from high density peering okay so it clears the traffic for the peer that uh, core router the use of distribution network limits the number of routers which establish peer relationship with the edge router in the core okay so with distribution network they are just helping the core routers okay we can save memory processing and transmission capacity now distribution network may also direct directly connect servers that are of use to multiple access networks such as database servers network and network management servers so this was regarding the distribution networks then we have the core network now core network they are also called as the backbone networks and they connect geographically dispersed distribution networks as well as providing access to other networks that are not part of the enterprise network okay this is the these are the core networks they connect the various distribution networks together then the core uh, they, they also connect to other networks which are not the part of the enterprise network and the core network they will actually use very high performance routers of course this there is a high traffic at the core network so they require very high performance routers then they also require high capacity transmission lines and multiple connected routers for increased redundancy and capacity so in case if any of the router fails the other can of course take up the thing okay so that we get a good redundancy okay now the core network also may also connect to high performance high capacity servers such as large database servers and private cloud facilities okay so the core routers may be purely internal providing redundancy and additional capacity without serving as the edge router so they may be, they may be serving like a backup one okay then a hierarchical network architecture is an example of good modular design as we saw in this case so with this design the capacity features and functionality of network equipment such as routers switches etc can be optimized we can make a best use of these resources for their for their position in the hierarchy and the requirements at the uh, given hierarchical level so uh, that's all for this particular session okay we'll continue with the uh, in the next lecture we will see some standards that is with respect to ethernet wi-fi and the uh, cellular networks okay so that's all for this particular lecture thanks for watching